There was a time when the Scorpion tank in Halo was considered to be completely scrapped and cut out of the final release of Halo Combat Evolved. But fortunately enough, it found its use in that first title and would return in every mainline Halo game, getting its own moment in one way or another, which probably is a good thing because if a Halo game released without a good tank level, I'd be like, why? Why did we even show up today? Why are we here? What are we doing today? Tank levels are important to Halo, but which ones are the very best? To best understand this, let's go all the way back to Halo Combat Evolved, which was the first Halo game and had exactly one campaign level with a tank in it. And boy oh boy did it set the stage for the future of Halo's sandbox in campaigns, but also ended up becoming an iconic level in itself. We're talking Assault on the Control Room. Now in general, by this point in the Halo Combat Evolved campaign, you're in for a pretty long mission ahead of you with Assault on the Control Room. It's one of the longest levels in Combat Evolved and contains a lot of traversing through familiar architecture a couple of times over and over. As you traverse the internal parts of the canyon, making your way down to the ground level before getting to traverse the outdoor section, there's a lot of close quarters combat that you have to do along the way. And bringing the tank into play on Assault in the Control Room was a great design choice because it broke up a lot of the monotony of going through a room, clearing some enemies, going to the next similar looking room, clearing some more enemies, repeat over and over again. All of a sudden, in the halfway point of the level, we get access to this giant tank and we just get to cruise through this open, snowy ice field. We get to fight off enemies that are big and small. We have a little machine gun turret on our tank and we even get to take it indoors for a little bit as well. Nonetheless, for something that almost didn't even make its way into the final release of the game, this is a great starting point for Halo's tank type levels. But let's go ahead and fast forward a couple of years to Halo 2's release. Now Halo 2 overall has three different levels where you have access to a Scorpion tank, and then one area where you're expected to drive a Wraith tank for at least part of the level. Now looking at the Scorpion tank levels to begin with, we start things off with Metropolis which boy oh boy was this an awesome way to introduce the tank back into Halo with Halo 2. In the previous level you're already faced with having to fight off several different types of Covenant vehicles and most of the time you're either on foot or you're in a warthog and every vehicle kind of poses a little bit of a threat but starting off with Metropolis no way you just get to push right through blasting your way across the bridge and it's a pretty fun opening for a level keeping things varied along the way. The only real downside is at the the second half of the bridge, you start to fight off some banshees, which is an interesting touch, but once you get into the tunnels, your time in the tank does come to an end as you typically have to get out of the tank and push on foot for the next area. Still, for what this stretch of gameplay does set out to do, it accomplishes it in a really great manner and definitely will be a contender later on when we look for which Halo had the greatest tank level of all time. Now, moving forward in the campaign, the other levels with the Scorpion tank aren't necessarily as Scorpion tank centric as the previous tank levels we've looked at already. First, we have Delta Halo, which, we'll be honest, a lot of people go through their entire Halo 2 playthrough not realizing that there is a Scorpion tank even on this level, much like the Warthog that you can get at the beginning of the level. Cortana even makes a joke because I think so many people just don't grab the tank. You don't want the tank. But if you do choose to take the tank with you across this bridge, you can go through a little bit of the ruins and fight a couple of things before you get to the final area where there are more enemies. But outside of that, you don't really get to bring the tank with you that much further. This level, while it does help having the Scorpion tank with you, doesn't really feel like it was fully allowing players to utilize the tank as a part of their arsenal, since you really only get access to it for a couple of rooms. And it is helpful, but forcing you out to go on foot and go through the little jackal valley or whatever you want to call this area does kind of knock it down a little bit since so many players nowadays choose to play through this level without the tank just to save themselves the trouble. Later on in the game we do get access to another tank in the form of a flood driven scorpion tank or I think there's even an unoccupied tank you can grab somewhere around here as well maybe? Luke check that and then voice if that's true. The unoccupied tank isn't until like way later in the level but there is an unoccupied tank for like the last stretch 
switch before you get into the gondola. I think most people experience this level driving either the specter or the ghost, and they just kind of cruise through dodging enemies and taking out enemies along the way. There's several stops where you're expected to get out of the vehicle, go on foot for a bit, then jump on another vehicle. And then there's the little areas where you can utilize the tank, though it really almost seems like the tank is set up to be either an adversary or maybe something you can briefly use to take out a couple of enemies as an asset, but not something you're expected to continue on for the length of the campaign level with. It's definitely not a bad level, it's just its utilization is different here than the classic Halo tank level experience you would expect. And then we weren't even sure if we were gonna talk about the Wraith in this video, because you could access a Wraith in multiple different levels in this game, but it does seem like the very beginning of the Just Okay journey expects you to jump inside of the Wraith. I mean, look at how this cutscene opens up. And it is kind of fun if you take the Wraith. You get to kind of move around, blow up some stuff, fight off a couple of other tanks. It's not the longest stretch of the tank section, but it is enough to warrant its existence, especially since there's some other tanks you have to take out at the end section here so we do think it was worth including in this video especially because it is kind of unique now halo 3 holds off on giving players access to a scorpion tank right away the first couple of levels uh, -uh no scorpion tank you're gonna do some stuff on foot you're gonna get a warthog eventually you're gonna do some more stuff on foot but then when it is time to get a tank it's a lot of fun in this level they don't just give you one tank they don't just give you two tanks they give you three tanks to choose from and you can either have your friends or your AI buddies that drive the other tanks. So you're an actual scorpion fleet driving through the desert. And then there's a bunch of enemies that are set up along the drive back to where you have to go across the wall to keep you entertained as you're fighting off and just blasting your way through. The voice lines and dialogue acknowledging that tank beats everything is really clever because they definitely set up this whole thing to be a fun tank driving section. And it possibly is one of the greatest tank levels in all of Halo, or at least this stretch here. Then after you make your way to the big area where the door is, there's a bunch of bigger vehicles like wraiths you have to take out and then there's some choppers and shade turrets and reinforcements and that part's also really fun to get to clear too. The only real disappointing thing that happens here is after you clear this part and the door gets open, you have to say goodbye to your scorpion tank and head inside and then you activate the light bridge and you continue on and then oh boy the tanks are back and we get to jump right back into a scorpion tank if we want to. We get to drive through through crushing different waves of enemies, taking out a scarab with the scorpion tank if we choose to, or use the tank to help take out the scarab, however your play style is. I really love how they kind of did that. They're like, yep, you're done with the tank. Just kidding. Go ahead, have some more fun with it. And then after that, you do have to get out of the tank. You go do some stuff in the hallways and indoor section of the level. You then go up, press some button, go down to another floor, and then there's this final firefight. And oh boy, we get another tank again. <laughs> okay, I'm just totally kidding about that last tank, but could you imagine how much fun that would be if just all of a sudden we had a scorpion tank for that last brute fight battle? There's some things you don't know that you need until you think about them and then you realize you need them. And just when you thought the tank shenanigans with Halo 3 were over, when we get to the next level, the Covenant, in the back section of the level, there is this little run you do when you go to the door and you're pushing into the control room where you have access to a scorpion tank and you can push your way alongside these cliffs, taking out a ton of Covenant reinforcements and everything that stands in your path. There's even enemy prowlers that get in your way that you can just blast out of there. And then the level opens up a little bit and gives you some freedom. You can choose to either take the Hornet to fight off the Scarabs, or you can keep your tank if you've kept it alive this far and fight the Scarabs with the tank too. Either way works, but it's cool that it gave you that freedom to get to choose on this level. Next, we go to Halo 3 ODST's Kazingo Boulevard, which was kind of the standard tank level for ODST. And this level is a lot of fun also. ODST is paced out a lot slower than most Halo games, where you spend a lot of time on the streets or exploring or maybe there's a driving level here or there but for this level we got to just blast through the streets that we had just been walking through as rookie for quite some time but in a tank and it's a lot of fun there's a lot of vehicle combat you get to do a lot of different little stretches you drive your tank through that all leads up to this big open area where there's just a lot of stuff going on and you can kind of get into some tank combat here and you not only have to look out for yourself but you do get 
to play pretty aggressively and keep yourself alive while you clear out the masses of enemies in this area. And it's a different approach to a scorpion tank level that still works really well in ODST. But then when you thought you were done with the tank in ODST in Kazingo Boulevard, you do get access to another tank in Coastal Highway, which not only do you have to escort the Oliphant, but in that last stretch of the highway, the enemies start to get really intense. There's way more wraiths and shade turrets and bigger enemies you have to worry about. And having the tank to help you keep something else alive, because you do have to make sure that Dare and Virgil don't die in their garbage truck that they're riding in. It is really nice to have access to this scorpion tank and get to just clear out the enemies that come up in front of us. Now, as we move on to Halo Reach, there's no surprise in any Halo game when you find yourself retreading on an area or a level that you've already experienced earlier in the game. This is something very common across a lot of the Halo games where you revisit locations that you already played through in the campaign in just a different type of setting. And Halo Reach still has this with the level The Package, which is kind of playing through part of the level sword base, but backwards. However, as we go through familiar territory, which this time around has a lot of harder, more difficult enemies, and things are a lot more destroyed this much later in the Reach invasion, we do get a tank, and it does make retreading the path that we already did a whole lot better because this time around, the experience going through this section that's now different looking is completely flipped on its head. We have the first tank experience in Halo Reach, which was saved for very late in the game, and you can pretty much just blast your way through everything here, and while it, they could have really included a little bit more of some tank stuff in Halo Reach. Since they literally just had two tank levels in the last game and another two in the game before that, it did make sense that they maybe cut it down a bit in favor of letting some of the other vehicles have a chance to shine. I get it. But still, this Scorpion tank level isn't the worst and it's still a positive tank level. But then we can look to Halo 4. Now, I know some of you guys are going to think that I just don't like the Halo 4 tank level just because it's Halo 4 and that's not the case. I just genuinely don't think that the tank level in Halo 4 really works all that well. The level already has a lot going on. There's so many firefights and things that happen at the beginning of the level and then just kind of in the midway section you're thrown into a tank and you just drive it for a very short little area and you shoot some stuff and then that's the end of the tank part. Then you get this whole mantis part which does the same exact thing you would do in the scorpion thing just again but in a mantis and then you have a mantis firefight at the end of the level. I felt like the tank inclusion in this level was thrown in there just for the sake of being like yep here's the tank level that we need to have in a halo game and it wasn't really crafted for a tank level. But on the flip side, I will say Halo 5 Guardians does a much better job with its Scorpion tank levels rather than the Scorpion tank level we have in Halo 4. Yeah, with Halo 5 Glassed, it definitely feels like this level is a little bit shorter, but the tank section is still kind of fun. There's some enemies to shoot at, some stuff to feel like you're actually in a bulkier vehicle that you're just smashing your way through some stuff, and it does feel like a tool as a part of the sandbox that you can utilize here, which came at a good time where the pace benefited from it. Not to say Halo 5 has the greatest pacing ever, but in this one specific moment where the tank does become available, things brighten up at least a slight bit. It's at least an improvement from Halo 4. But the better level of the two is probably Genesis, which opens up as more of that classic tank level with the beginning part of the level, giving you a tank and a lot of big enemies you get to fight your way through and clear out. It's a little bit more of a traditional type of tank level, but at the very least, it does its job at succeeding in this. You're in a big gun, you get to shoot stuff, what more can you ask for? It at least feels intentional and not just shoehorned in. Then we look to Halo Infinite, and there are sections of Halo Infinite where you can have access to a tank and you can just drive a tank and spawn one in and do your thing with the Scorpion tank. However, there is a dedicated section of the campaign where you are expected to take a tank and drive up towards the end game of the game, utilizing the tank and just blasting your way through. And honestly, Despite the fact that Halo Infinite reuses its locations or has to utilize its locations in a way that has you traverse the open world aspect of the game, they still manage to capture that original feeling of driving a tank in a specified direction with a level crafted around the existence of a tank, where finally as a player you're like, yes, this is what a tank level should feel like, and honestly, this level is a pretty big improvement from not only Halo 4, but also it kind of built off of what Halo 5 kind of had going for it in that earlier tank level. We do wish that this tank level was just a little bit longer. It does feel like with the long amount of time you've already spent 
into exploring the Halo ring. And as we're getting closer to the end game, we know that we're going into this big stretched out final act of the game. They could have maybe let us use the tank a little bit longer and pushed a little bit deeper in with the Scorpion tank instead of just cutting us off this early. But it, we can't really complain. It's about the same length as a regular Scorpion tank section in a level goes. So it still is one of the better Scorpion tank levels. Okay, so with that being all of the main tank levels we've seen in every Halo game, let's go ahead and pick the top three and the bottom three. For top three, I can't help but to say the top three probably would be Metropolis, the Ark, and Kazingo Boulevard, with probably the Ark taking the crown as number one here. I mean, it's just really awesome that we get to just jump in three tanks and just push our way through a desert, destroying everything in our way, and the game's even self-aware of it. It just lets you go off and have a good time, and then right when you think it's done, it throws you back into the tank again, and then you get this giant ultimate battle in a Scorpion tank if you haven't already gotten to do that, and that's awesome. So that is deserving of the first place, I think, easily. We also did consider Assault in the Control Room from Halo CE and Coastal Highway as contenders, but they just more get honorable mentions right below those top three. Bottom three was a little bit harder to pick. I think last place probably goes to that Halo 4 level. I just don't think that there's anything special about the Scorpion tank level. It's just drive through it and get done as quickly as you can. I don't even think really any people who just love Halo 4, like it's their favorite Halo game, necessarily think that this is the best example of a Scorpion level. And they missed the mark here. They did better with Halo 5. And then not as bad as Halo 4, but still probably not the best Scorpion tank level. Uh, I guess Quarantine Zone, if we're gonna talk about it, because it does have a Scorpion tank on it. It's not really a Scorpion tank level, but if we're gonna call it one, we need to put it on the list here. It's probably down here. And then I guess Delta Halo would be the next one, just because so many people don't even realize there is a tank on Delta Halo. Like it's the forgotten tank level of Halo. There is definitely some utilization you can use the tank for to help you with on Delta Halo, but Overall, it's definitely not needed. It's not seen as a tank level, I think, amongst fans, so it kind of falls a little bit further down the list. I think then the Halo 5 ones would have been the next ones up above Delta Halo, which ultimately leaves Halo Infinite's tank somewhere in the middle of our tank tier list or whatever, with the Covenant maybe just right above Halo Infinite's tank level. And then we'll put the Great Journey probably right below Halo Infinite's tank level, I think. I mean, it's not bad. It's just a little bit different. And we didn't talk about like the other Wraith levels across Halo. There's really not many or anything, just levels you can get a Wraith. It's not really the same thing. But yeah, specifically for this topic, I felt a little bit better about picking a top three and a bottom three rather than necessarily having to definitively be like, this is the number one best. Even though the arc kind of is the number one best. But yeah, these were just our picks, our opinions. Are we way off on something? Are you a Halo 4 Scorpion tank advocate and you want to explain to us why you think that that tank level is perfectly crafted? then please, by all means, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion. But if you agree or you think some things should be moved around a little bit, I'm all fair game for those two because I do think, in general, the tank levels are all classified as good. And then when you have to start kind of picking and choosing which ones are the best, it gets a little bit gray. But I would love to know what you guys think and where your Scorpion picks would go. Huge shout out to our patrons. Thanks so much for all the support, making these videos possible, making videos on our other channel, Rocket One, possible. If you haven't watched our video where we talked about when Nickelodeon tried to sell smells. Make sure you check it out. We talked about like the history of scratch and sniff. It gets real deep. It gets real weird. So check that out. And if you want to become a patron and help support our content, a couple dollars does go a long way. Otherwise, thanks so much for all the support. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more videos like this. That's it for today. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.